Coming up in this video, I'm going to show you an unboxing and review of the Creature Casters King of Ruin model that just came out uh, around the time of this video. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Mini Junkie, everyone. My name's Jarrett. So uh, I haven't done an unboxing video or a review in some time. Uh, actually, I think I did some review of some Tufts like 10 years ago or something, but uh, this is kind of brief. I just uh, ordered the new Creature Caster King of Ruin because, man, it is one cool-looking model. I couldn't resist the marketing. Um, I know that uh, Spiky Bits did a pretty thorough unboxing uh, already, which I did not realize when I basically filmed all of this. Uh, I'm just filming the intro now, but really cool model and I find, um, well, I won't spoil it, but uh, let's get into the video and you'll see what I thought of this model. All right, everyone, here it is. This is the King of Ruin, which is a new, fairly large scale, kind of nergly, chaotic, ruinous looking large model um, produced by Creature Caster who are out in British Columbia, which is next door to Alberta, which is why I received it in just like a day or two. Uh, price and shipping was pretty reasonable. Now it didn't come, this isn't the shipping box. This came inside of a more sturdy box, which is great, but fit just nicely. And so that's gone. And then this uh, packaging is pretty nice. It's like, I like the branding on it. It's very sort of clean and kind of cool looking. It is oddly, thin cardboard though um, almost like cereal box cardboard I think that's okay though because um, I'm not planning to throw it around the room and it came like I said in a more sturdy box so I think that's fine by the way I'm totally recording this unscripted I've not opened this at all well I've opened it to take a tiny peek but I'm pretty much opening this with you guys so that's why I might sort of ramble a little bit here one of the thing that's cool is um, this came i don't know if i think this is a limited time offer but it came with like this wound counter you could probably use it as a um, turn counter if you wanted and what what you get is like a little this is the dial it slots into it and the nice touch is that they actually give you a different dial depending on which of the two faces you use i believe or two heads it comes with two different heads uh, which is more than i would have expected them to do i would have just expected maybe one piece and yeah it just fits in there nicely and well you gotta cut off the chunks of resin but yeah that's a pretty cool touch i think like i said that's a limited time thing so if you're interested in that you might want to order this pretty soon it comes in this again i have not opened this part so i'm gonna move the box uh this is almost like it reminds me of the type of sort of bubbly bubble wrap envelope thing that like a computer component might come in um, so it's sealed up nice and tight so that nothing comes out and let's see I don't know if I can rip it open or if I'm gonna need okay well I've got my ancient very dull hobby knife that I keep at my painting station there you go oh my gosh that's there's a lot of stuff in there okay so let's see first thing I'm pulling out is a bag of smaller bits you got chain and wrecking ball some horns and things like that and you get here's his feet wow this is a lot of resin in here guys very cool that's the sword uh, nicely corroded it's got teeth on the inside the casting quality looks pretty good to me um, Nice detail, you can see all in here, these teeth and this sort of skull shape. It's got, you know, it'll need some cleanup. There's tiny bits of flash and and whatnot from the casting process. I bet that snaps right off. I'll just clean those up in, later. Um, I will also be washing these in soap and water and scrubbing them because I'm, well, you should pretty much always do that with resin. I'm not, I don't always wash models, but resin in particular you can get the mold release can cause problems with your primer and stuff so you should definitely wash them so there's that i'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be like that so okay there's one gross tentacles try and keep them in the frame 
I'm guessing they broke off of here. So there's an A and a B. I think I can probably figure out where they go though. And like a toenail. So yeah, there's plenty of um, flash and whatnot to, you know, to remove, but it seems to come off cleanly. So I'm not too worried about that. More stuff in the bag, loincloth. Uh, the two heads are in there. Here, I'll just give you a look here. You get kind of more screwed up guy with a giant mouth and then you get this guy who's got a fairly great unclean one looking face but that's cool I don't have a problem with that um, resin seams wow this is these are some seriously large and cool pieces um, yeah I'll end up I'll be cleaning these up with a knife and with clippers and whatnot and files and sandpaper to make sure they're ready to go uh, nice base Obviously the two feet go here. Uh, looks like there may be some depressions for the guts in there. Ah, nice touch. Creature Caster logo. And I'm always a fan of when a base sits flat and that's got this big chunk of sprue in the, or uh, you know, resin casting in the back. So once I cut that off, I'll, I'll make sure that's flat. Big chunk of body. Let's see here. Looks to me like the legs or the feet are gonna go in the in here. This is the upper body, some nice uh, slots for the pegs. So it should, I'm not gonna be pinning this guy. There's lots of slot and peg construction elements, but also I find that when you've cleaned it up properly, resin glues together with super glue like, like rock hard. I don't know what it is. Um, not a chemist or whatever, but it's almost to the point where to separate super glued pieces, you're gonna end up almost breaking them. So I'm not I'm not gonna be pinning this guy and I, I don't have any concerns about that. This is his upper body. He's got the chest, got where his head's gonna go. Uh, probably like, horn, you know, the horns and antler type things. Lots of nice detail, lots of boobos and pustules and whatnot. I'm saying whatnot a lot. Uh, there's even like, Texture, oh God, it'd be nice if I put this on camera for you. Um, there's even texture carved into the straps and things, so that's nice. Bits of chain mail, bits of rope, lots of nice little details on this guy. Getting down to the end here. This is cool. This is the uh, pauldron or shoulder pad coming down to his forearm where he's got like um, bone and protrusions and stuff which is cool so if you look at it's gonna go once it's cleaned up properly which is totally not right now yeah it probably won't fit right now but it's gonna be like that so yeah the, the next step is gonna be cleaning these up so this is the well, that's really cool wait a minute I wonder I'm wondering if there's like a choice of weapon maybe not um, I'll, I'll check his arm Nice handle, really cool how the wraps are all, they've got like lots of texture in there as well, so lots of uh, interesting painting surfaces to work with. And I guess he's holding more gross guts and things, I'll show you that, I'll show you later how I'm, I'm probably going to do a separate video to paint this guy. And I said recently uh, I give away a subscriber giveaway for 3,000 subs and I got mixed re mixed reactions to that. Um, maybe I'll give this guy away depend after he's painted. Depends how much I'm in love with him when he's done. Uh, but yeah, I got mixed reactions that maybe that's gimmicky or maybe it's unnecessary. So I'm on the fence about if I'm going to do that or wait till 5,000 and do it once or something. I don't know. But surprising a little bit. But I do see people's points that it's not necessarily... Well, it's not necessary if I'm producing decent content and, um, you know, maybe uh, it's not meant to be a bribe, but maybe it comes across that way. So anyway, I'm not sure yet what I'll do, and I may give this guy away when he's done painting. The second part of this review, what I'll do is I'll finish, I'll clean him up and wash him and assemble him, and I'll bring him back. It'll take me a while, but in the magic of video editing, it won't feel like that for you. I'll bring him back, 
and I'll review how it was to clean him up and what I think of the overall model once he's assembled and how easy it was to assemble. All right, guys, I'm back. It's always awesome when you record the second half of a review like this and realize you didn't turn your microphone on, so I'm actually repeating a bunch of stuff I just finished saying. Um, here he is, assembled. Overall, not bad to put together. I would say some of the fit was not as great as I would have liked. Um, there was times when you know I put pieces together that seemed to fit, like the legs against the body or the legs in the base, and they'd have plenty of super glue, but they actually would come come apart, and it would look like the glue was barely making contact between the two pieces, which is weird because they seem like they fit pretty good. Uh, but I obviously managed to figure that out and work around it and remove bits and whatnot, file it down, etc. Um, but in the end, so I'm happy with how he did go together. I did not bother magnetizing. I'm not much for magnetizing. Not such a heavy gamer anyway, so um, didn't do that. And I did glue him together, so painting him will be somewhat problematic, but I'm not much of a sub-assembly guy either. And I'm also not going to paint this guy and enter him into crystal brush or anything. I'm just going to paint him so he looks cool and that I'm happy with. There was some gap filling. You'll, I'll put a picture on screen of the material I was using, which is uh, Vallejo plastic putty. What you do is I'd, I'd run a, a bead of it through wherever there was like a, you know, a gap. And then almost like caulking in a bathroom or whatever, you would take uh, like a wet bit of paper towel or something or a wet finger and literally just run it to sort of push the, smooth it out and push it into the crack, etc. Um, a couple spots, like um, I didn't get this, you can probably see that on the screen. Um, I don't want to wreck the rope detail that's there, so I'm kind of like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little iffy on that spot. Plus, once he's standing, you really don't notice it. Um, I'm all about not painting or fixing things you can't see when I'm, well, frequently in a hurry these days. Also, same thing with the base, there's a lot of detail sculpted under there, like maggots and skulls that you really just can't see once he's on it. So I'll paint what you can see uh, as best I can. The base strikes me as a, a little bit of a missed opportunity in the sense that the, the great unclean one base nowadays is 130 millimeters. This is 100 millimeter. So, I mean, let's be honest here. This guy sure does seem like he's meant to be a proxy for a great unclean one. And so for people like who were playing AOS or Warhammer, it would be nice if you could have just put him on a 130 millimeter base and he'd be good to go anywhere outside of a GW store or GW tournament. However, it is a nice sculpted base. And you could set, you could either just not use it and put, buy a separate base, because I think they do sell them separately on their web store, uh, GW, or put it on the 130 millimeter base and build up around the edge with your terrain and, and basing. And then he'll be sort of game legal as far as his base size, a minor thing. Uh, yeah, so I didn't magnetize. I like the cool sword and the handful of wormy guts. Uh, actually, I don't think that part was optional. Lots of lots of cool detail. Um, so apart from the fit, some of the gaps, um, those things were a bit off-putting. I'm also kind of not thrilled that there's no instructions for him, not even online, nothing, not even in like a... As far as I know, not even like a blog post of like some tips or how to put them together. I mean, the average modeler who's got some experience, which I guess this is who this kit is for, will figure it out just based on looking at the picture and stuff. But I don't know, I just I found myself wishing I had like a some kind of a reference to look at as far as, uh, you know, put this piece here, put this horn there, glue these horns together before you stick them to the head, that kind of stuff. Just little things, tips and tricks for assembling him would be nice. Um, just feels like this kind of a kit with these kind of details and that many pieces should have some kind of a guide with it. But I worked my way through it, so not the end of the world. The other thing I wasn't thrilled about was the base, uh, to just go back to it for a sec, was warped a bit, just enough to be a noticeable and annoying. So I spent a few, you know, a few times I was putting it in near boiling water, take it out, press it flat, cool it off. And in the end, I even put it under something heavy overnight and I was able to get it 99%. Um, you can't quite see, but there's a gap, a little bit of a gap there, but I got it 99%, so I'm happy. So yeah, that's this guy, and let's bring out uh, his cousin, the great unclean one from Games Workshop, the newest one, okay? You can see bigger base, well, maybe you can't tell from the video, 
Um, I did start painting this guy and stopped. I don't remember why I stopped. Um, usually it's because I get distracted by a new model or release. Maybe it was Eidneth Deepkin or Night Haunts or something. But he is not as tall as the King of Ruin. He is really cool. I mean, I do really, really like this model, but he's not as detailed as the King of Ruin in terms of having all kinds of cool armor, horns, you know, skulls and ropes and all kinds of stuff all over this guy, which is really cool. Whereas this guy, other than little nerglings here and there, he's mostly naked and, you know, he's okay with that. I'm okay with that. So yeah, he's good. He, it's an awesome model, but again, like he's, not again, but he's like 170 Canadian or something like that. This guy was less than that, 150 or something. So it's kind of interesting, like this guy, it's more work to put together, but the end result is definitely more impressive and costs less and could be, again, adapted with the right base for Age of Sigmar or something like that, as long as you're not playing in official Games Workshop tournaments. So it's a really nice uh, alternate for when you're playing with your friends or just at the club. It's really killer, and I am thinking I'm going to do a painting video for him. It's a little daunting, and I worry about how long it's going to take. Might have to be more than one video. What else? Um, I think that's it. I think I covered everything. I so when it comes to there's a few as far as giving this guy a rating, which I don't have a system right now. So you know, if I was going to go out of five, I'd say 4.75 out of five. And the reason I would deduct a little bit is some of the issues with the fit of pieces not fitting right even after I thought I had them cleaned up properly and stuff. Um, the warped base, which was not fun, and um, no instructions or guide or tips or blog or anything about putting them together, which again, I think would be nice. And I have lots of experience with models, so I was able to work around it, but I think it would have been a good touch to have that. So, but really the best, um, the best thing I can say as far as uh, to sum up how I feel about the model is that now that I've got them together and I've seen them in the flesh, so to speak, I am going to Creature Caster's website frequently and looking at all the other models uh, and trying to resist buying them like the King of War, which is a super kick-ass model, which I am almost certainly going to end up getting and painting as well. So the fact that I'm going to be a repeat buyer and look forward to more of their models in the future and that I am going to paint him and I'm pumped about doing so. All those things point to this being absolutely worth your money, absolutely worth buying, absolutely worth putting a little extra work in to get him, get him to a great place for painting. And this guy is really good too, but you know, if I have to pick between them, I would certainly go with this one. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Leave a comment below. Are you going to buy the King of Ruin? Have you bought Creature Caster before? Have you heard of them before? Well, the great thing is, I may have mentioned this in the first half of the video, but they are in Canada over in British Columbia, so practically next door, which is also really cool. Great to see um, a really cool product coming out of Canada. That's it, guys. Uh, please share, like, and subscribe for more videos.